In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to detect physical contact between two objects. I'm going to move cube A across the screen until it touches cube B, at which point cube B will disappear. It probably sounds quite complicated to set this up, but you'll be surprised at how easy it actually is. The first thing to do then, we'll open our Expresso editor and pull in our cubes. And we're going to arrange them one beneath the other on this occasion. We'll go to our menus at the output ports here and we'll select objects and we're going to do this in both cubes. The key to all of this is a new node that we haven't seen yet called a collision node. We'll go to our menu, new node, Expresso General and at the top here collision. And there we have our node. It's set up in its initial state exactly as we need it to be. We can add new ports at the input and output stage but we're not going to. We don't need them. I'll just connect our cubes up here. And the next thing I'm going to do is come across to our menus here and bring in a result node so that you can actually see how the collision detection works. So I'll just, if I can do it, wire that one in there. Come up to my cube A here. Now I'm going to move cube A across the screen until it touches cube B. And where we've got a naught in the result node at the moment, we should end up with a 1 when they actually physically touch each other. Let's just move cube A across the screen and see what happens. They're colliding. Ah, OK. We're not getting a 1 in there, so why might that be? Well, as you've probably guessed, I've actually set that up deliberately just to demonstrate this to you. The reason that isn't happening is because the collision detection node works with geometric objects only. And at the moment, the cubes are parametric objects. We haven't made them editable yet. So that's the next port of call. So we'll select both of them, come over either to the button here or press C on our computer keyboard and make them editable. And as you can see there, once the objects are editable, you've probably seen this before, but anyway, the cubes now have geometric icons as opposed to parametric icons. Now the reason I've shown you this is because, all right, OK, in your situations, you're probably not going to be working with cubes. However, you might get a situation where you're working with spheres that you want to collide with each other. And in that situation, if you forget to make the spheres editable, the collision detection won't work. So it's worth noting that. Let's just bring the editor open again. Before we go any further, we'll just show you that this does now physically work. So if we select cube A and we drag it across the screen until it touches cube B, we do now get a number one. The final stage is to bring cube B in again and make it disappear when cube A touches it. Just bring that in and set that up. So in our menu here, we select Basic Properties, Visible in Editor. Visible in Editor works by allowing an object to remain visible when it receives a zero. So we'll plumb this in just over here and, and show you how that works. And that proves it. And when it receives a 1, it will make the object disappear. So we'll drag cube A into cube B and show you that. And there you go. It works. When we drag cube A into cube B, cube B disappears. A simple expression again, just four basic nodes. Because after all, we didn't really need the result node. It's only in there to demonstrate how it all works. Four nodes, that's all you really need. A couple of objects, collision detection, and then the last object, make it visible or invisible, depending on what result you get from the collision. That concludes this tutorial, and in our next one, we're going to take things a little bit further and do something a little bit more advanced. I'll see you there soon.